Hey guys, Larry here, pastor at Christ Lutheran Church in Breckenridge, Colorado. Good to be with you today. Thanks for spending some time with me as uh, we reflect on God's Word and what that Word means for us as the followers of Christ in our lives today. Uh, you likely know that my family and I, uh, we moved up here just a little over 11 months ago. And we, in those 11 months, have been able to accomplish some things like cleaning up our, our communication here at Christ Lutheran Church. Uh, we've been able to um, get the right men and the right women in the right positions of leadership at our congregation so that our, our leadership structure is, is functioning a little bit more efficiently. And uh, of course, the big thing that we have done in these past 11 months is uh, buying a parsonage. God, by His grace, working through the church, has uh, allowed our congregation to buy a parsonage so that my family and, and I have a place to live here in Summit County as we uh, join you guys and, and lead you guys in the mission to the people in, in Summit County. So th these things are, are all good. These things are all for, from God. Um, but I'll also say this. These things aren't our ultimate mission, right? Uh, our mission isn't to just be the most efficient organization that we can be. Our mission at Christ Lutheran Church isn't to simply um, be content with the fact that we live in a beautiful place in Summit County. It's a nice perk. <laughs> Uh, I, I certainly love living here with my family. It's beautiful to look out the window and to see mountains and to go skiing and to go biking and to go hiking. And, and yet, that's not the purpose of me being here, right? If I, uh, at this point, just kind of sit back and relax and say, all right, all good, we're done here. Uh, feel free, feel free to fire me because that is not why you all called me to be your your shepherd, your pastor in this place. Uh, our mission is to reach the people of God or the people in of Summit County with the the love of of God. Right? We um, we say it this way: as God's children, we offer compassion, community, and communion with Christ to the people in Summit County. Even Martin Luther, the uh, 16th century theologian, he said this, that the reason that God doesn't just uh, take us up to heaven immediately after we're baptized is because uh, he wants us to be part of his mission, his work, the spread, spread of the gospel here on earth. Right? That's why we exist. And so, as we consider um, our role, our purpose, our mission here in Summit County in, in 2020, it only makes sense for us, in my opinion, it only makes sense for us to be guided by the, the book of the Bible that tells us how the, the first Christians were empowered by the Holy Spirit for the mission of God in that time and in that place. And so today we're starting a, a new series through the book of Acts, a series by, uh, that we're calling By the Spirit for the World. So as we kick this series off, let me read for us from the beginning of Acts, Acts 1, verse 1. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. Now there, as we... Take a look at the book of Acts. 
and begin this series. I, I want to start off by looking at it through uh, two men. Two men that uh, are mentioned or, or referred to here in, in these verses here. Um, the two men behind the writing of the book of Acts. Now, of course, the Holy Spirit is working through this all the while. But there are two men, Luke and Theophilus that I want us to consider here for a moment. Uh, now, Luke. Luke was uh, um, a second-generation follower of Jesus. What, what I mean by that is that he wasn't an eyewitness to the teachings and miracles of Jesus. He, didn't, he wasn't an eyewitness to, to the resurrection. Uh, he, but he heard um, from people who were eyewitnesses to the miracles of Christ and the teachings of Jesus, uh, he heard from them uh, about Jesus and became a, a follower, a second generation follower of Christ. Uh, he was, in fact, a, a companion of the Apostle Paul. He's mentioned, Luke is mentioned in the New Testament directly three times in, in Colossians, in Philemon, books written by uh, the Apostle Paul, and also 2 Timothy, again, written by the Apostle Paul. He's directly referenced, his name pops up at, in those letters, right? And Luke is mentioned indirectly in the New Testament as well. Here's what I mean. In the book of Acts, Luke lets us know that he was present for some of the events that he records in the book of Acts. And how does he do that? Well, it's by a subtle shift in his language. He, he shifts from using third-person plural pronouns, they, to first-person plural pronouns, we, indicating to us that he was there during these events. So Luke uh, he, he wrote uh, two books of, of the Bible, right? This current book that we're, we're starting, Book of Acts, and his gospel, the Gospel of Luke. That, that's what he referenced in, in, in the first book uh, that he wrote, right? Uh, he, Luke did extensive research, right? He was, he was a smart guy. We know that Luke was a doctor. He was a, a physician, right? I like to think that uh, he would help take care of the Apostle Paul. Paul would go preach. He'd get he'd get uh, roughed up a little bit. Luke would take care of him. Paul would get thrown in prison. Luke would take care of him. People would throw stones at Paul. Luke would take care of him. Uh, I, I just kind of like to think of it in, in those terms, right? Uh, he was a smart guy. He was a physician. His Greek... His writings are amongst the most eloquent writings in the New Testament. God worked through different people to form the New Testament, right? And some of those people were fishermen, like John and Peter. And they wrote in a simpler Greek. And then there were scholars and physicians, like the Apostle Paul and Luke, that God worked through to, to write books of the Bible, of the New Testament, and their writings are more eloquent, bigger words, words that maybe are, aren't as frequent in the language. And so uh, we can tell by his writing style that he was a, an educated, intelligent guy. Uh, and we also know this about Luke, that where Luke's writings in the events that he records in the gospel and in Acts, where they coincide with writings from extra-biblical sources on, on history, on events in world history, uh, he, he proves over and over and over to be a credible historian. He was detailed. He got his facts straight. Luke also... Uh, between the book of Acts and the go his gospel. Uh, he wrote over half the New Testament in length. Right? He wrote a lot. And while Luke was writing his gospel and the book of Acts, 
he was writing to a man named Theophilus. Theophilus uh, is addressed in both the beginning of Luke, the Gospel, and the beginning of Acts. Uh, we, we don't know nearly as much about Theophilus as we do about Luke, but we can make some educated guesses. Uh, seemingly, this man, Theophilus, was a man of, of high social standing. Uh, he has a Greek name, Theophilus, means uh, God lover or loved by God, right? And so uh, possibly he was a Gentile. He wasn't uh, uh, a Jew by birth, right? Um, maybe Theophilus, uh, maybe he was the primary patron who was funding Luke's research and, and writing. And he was, uh, that was maybe his uh, contribution to the spread of the gospel, or maybe Theophilus was someone who had heard some things about, about Jesus, had some interest, but he wanted to have everything laid out in front of him as he considered whether or not he himself was going to become a follower of Jesus. And so whatever the case is exactly behind this, we don't know for sure, but we can, can say this, we can know this, that Theophilus was Luke's target audience. As Luke was writing his gospel and this, this book, he had in the back of his mind his friend, Theophilus. Of course, over, his, over time, over history, billions of followers of Jesus have read these, the gospel of Luke and have read Acts. And God has worked through that to bring people to faith in Jesus Christ. And thanks be to God for that. But, but Luke's uh, God-given focus, uh, his, his target, if you will, uh, in recording these e events of Jesus, uh, everything that he began to, to say and do, teach and do in, in the gospel, and then everything that Jesus continued to, to teach and do through his followers in the book of Acts, uh, all of these things uh, Luke is recording for, for Theophilus. The gospel... We know this is for all people, all nations, all races, all language, all tribes, everyone. And yet, it will benefit us as we're going through the book of Acts, a, a long book filled with miracles, filled with um, events that cover the span of some 35 years, uh, a book that gives some very big visions, <laughs> missions, pictures uh, of what the church is called for. It'll benefit us to think small as well, to think locally. Right? I, I think of um, bowling, when we go bowling, right? Uh, goal of bowling for small of every frame is to knock down all 10 pins. Right. But, but when you throw the ball, uh, when you're bowling, you're not looking at all 10 pins at, at once. No, you focus in on that, that one pin and, and the one spot on that one pin that you are aiming for, that you're throwing the ball at. And by focusing on that one spot, <laughs> then we can knock down all the pins. Right? In, in, in the same way, uh, the, the Great Commission, the gospel is for all people. But we can get fairly overwhelmed if we try to just think about the, the enorm enormity of the gospel and the mission, reaching all nations, uh, trying to think about what it means to reach our nation that's so polarized politically and racially right now, and it's it's overwhelming, and and so it's helpful for us to 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 start to telescope it a little bit, right? To to bring it in to 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 not just think about our nation, but to think about um, our county, our town, our neighborhood, 
our networks, at uh, work, at school, right? um, to think about that, that one person. The one, you know, the one. That when you wake up in the middle of the night, you're thinking about, that you're praying for. Right? As we go through the book of Acts, regularly ask that question, who is my Theophilus? Who's my Theophilus? Right. Moving on. Verses 4 and 5 of, of Acts chapter 1. And while staying with them, Jesus ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. The promise of the Father is a reference to the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit is uh, the third person of the Trinity, is God himself promised to us by Jesus, given to us by the Father to empower us for this great work of mission. Jesus will never ask his followers to do something that he doesn't also empower them for. He promises. He promises the Holy Spirit will be given to us as believers so that we can move forward with the authority of, of Jesus at the command of Jesus and with the power of the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. And the apostles believed, they believed this promise from Jesus. And, and what did that look like? How did that play out for the, the first 12, uh, for the apostles? Well, they waited, right? They waited for this promised Holy Spirit. They, they waited for um, some 10 days between Ascension and, and Pentecost for the Holy Spirit to come. They waited in spite of the fact that they're in Jerusalem and Jesus' killers the killers of, of their Lord and Savior, they were still on the prowl. They're still out there. They, they waited in spite of the fact that they were maybe getting antsy. They wanted to get going. <laughs> they wanted to get to the mission, right? Uh, they, they waited, right? They waited because they trusted this promise. They had faith. They believed in the promise of the Holy Spirit. Right? Now, uh, we try to communicate our, our good intentions our, and communicate that our promises are reliable in, in various ways, right? Uh, maybe you've seen or even done this. Uh, maybe you told someone, I, I pinky swear. I pinky swear that I'm, I'm good for this, right? I, or... or um, and maybe you've done the whole uh, cross your heart and hope to die, stick a needle in your eye, you know, kind of thing, right? But what are the what are the those things trying to communicate? Like, hey, I'm good for my word. My promise is true. And yet we know that uh, our promise isn't any better based on some superstitious things or goofy little riddles or, or whatever that we share. Uh, how do we know when someone is good for their promise? Well, one way, one way that we can know that someone is trustworthy is by whether they've kept their promises in the past. We've all had uh, people in our lives who we know from experience, 
I'm not going to count on their promise because they've let me down before. And we know that there are other people who, when they promise something, they come through no matter what. They come through for us that we can trust them. We can trust the promise of Jesus because Jesus has come through for us and been faithful to us every time he has made a promise. Every time he's made a promise to, to overcome sin, death, the devil, he comes through. Uh, we're told in Scripture that all God's promises are yes in Christ Jesus. Right? God uh, is faithful. Jesus is faithful. The Father is faithful. And he is good for it. His promises are true. And we can trust him. Right, uh, we in in our world today have plenty of reasons to to doubt, to be skeptical about is where's the church going? Um, is the gospel spreading? Is anyone really going to to believe? Right, and so we look at things. Uh, People have pointed out the demise of Christianity in America, right? And maybe not as many people going to, to church. Uh, we, we can look here in our own community, Summit County, and, and I've been told multiple times uh, by, by people like how difficult it is to, to uh, reach people in this community, in this culture. And yet, uh, I would say this, that we don't look to those things for confidence. <laughs> we don't put our faith in the people in our community. Uh, we don't look at trends to see, oh, well, will the mission of God actually work here in this place with these people? We look to Jesus. And Jesus has sent us on his mission and empowered us with the promised Holy Spirit who has been given to us in baptism and who we uh, are empowered with as we go forward. Jesus has called us to be his witnesses and empowered us to do so in the Spirit Friends, the Holy Spirit is a gift from God that we receive by faith. We confess it in the creeds. I believe in the Holy Spirit. He is with us, friends. He is with us to, emp to empower us for mission. He's with us to empower our faith in Jesus, to show us what Christ has done for us, for our families, for our marriages, for our friends, for our, for our, our lives. He's given us purpose for our children, for our parents, uh, for our neighbors, and for the entire world. The Holy Spirit is working within us to empower us for the mission of Christ to the glory of God. And so, <laughs> friends, we, we move forward by the Spirit for the world, trusting that as we do so, Jesus will be with us every step of the way. Amen. God's blessings. Bye, friends.